First of all, can I just quote something from your uh, speech today? You said, Ofsted inspectors are increasingly brought into contact with those who actively pervert the purpose of education. What do you mean by that? Well, I'm afraid there are a few schools in the state sector and independent schools, as well as some unregistered establishments, where we find really unsatisfactory things being taught. I've talked before about the kinds of books we found, not just in libraries, but being taught from um, encouraging husbands to beat their wives, saying that women can't refuse sex to their husbands. Those things are simply not compatible. But those presumably are in a tiny minority of schools. That's quite a small minority. In indeed, quite a small minority of schools. But we all, we're also coming across increasingly mm -hmm. evidence that there are tensions in communities often between um, different, different parts of the same faith, not necessarily between faiths, between different parts of the same faith. That are being, for example? So, for example, tensions between um, those Muslims who, who like um, very young girls to wear, to wear the hijab and those who most definitely don't. And we see these tensions being imported into schools. So part of our responsibility is to make sure that all children have the right educational experience Experience, and we have to look at these things. But you, you make clear in your speech that yes. we're not simply talking about Muslim faith. We're absolutely but, not. No. But proportionately, are there more issues there than there are, for example, in Anglican schools or in Hasidic schools or whatever? It's very hard. I don't have number, numbers at my fingertips, but yes, we do. We, do we, we but we see it. With, the point is that we see it in schools of all flavours. There are fantastic schools um, of every faith as well as no faith, and there are schools that cause us concern in every quarter as well. Um, um, you talk particularly, let's turn now to this yes. primary school in Newham in East London, and you talk about this, this what's happening there and the response to um, uh, the, the hijab ban uh, as a matter of regret. Now, what you were saying in your speech today was that this school introduced uh, a ban on young girls under the age of eight wearing the hijab, and you very much, very strongly supported the head in her freedom to do that. I did, and this is the kind of thing that I was warning about in um, some comments I made late, late last year, which got quite a lot of attention at the time, and it was represented as being Islamophobic. It absolutely isn't. This is a concern about bringing adult pressures and disagreements to bear on young children in primary schools. I'm interested in this because, in fact, um, this new in primary yeah. is an outstanding school academically and presumably it's had an outstanding report before you did bring yeah. Ofsted uh, inspectors in yesterday, but it has achieved a lot. So if that's the case, why do you think that you have to step in and say the te what this teacher is doing is correct if the school's actually yeah. thriving? Because we look not just at the educational outcomes, we have to look at the personal development and welfare of the children. Um, so if we see things that suggest there's any kind of bullying going on in the school, for example, that's the kind of thing our inspectors always look at. They talk to groups of children, they get a sense of whether the culture, um, the pressures in the school are as they should be, or whether there are things that... Well, should... interestingly, yeah. because I suppose what yeah. you could say is, if you've said in a yeah. major speech that you back the teacher because yeah. wearing the hijab for under eights in, in your view, is wrong. Uh, is that no, something? Is it, hang on, no, 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 wrong for this school. Mm -hmm. um, is this something that you think that you could say? Well, actually, wearing the hijab after puberty is right, or you know, I, I think I support the idea that no child under eight should be able to wear the hijab. Or is it just simply this one school? No, it's not this one school. But the point is, the head made a decision, and as far as I on what as basis I can, did you make the decision? On the basis that it is clearly the responsibility of the head to set the uniform but, policy but of the on, school. But why, why, what was her reasoning for not allowing kids under eight to wear the hijab? Because that is before the age of puberty. There is no religious so, requirement for, for, for children of yeah. that age to wear it. It's a cultural preference. It's not a religious so requirement. But, it, but you're saying it's a cultural preference, not a religious requirement. So, so that school's one thing, other schools are another thing. But I wonder if by Ofsted taking you know, the most senior figure in Ofsted, taking a position on this, you're actually stepping into an area that actually you would rather it was devolved to heads in the first place, wouldn't you? No, th th this is something that is very much our concern. When we see that a school is being bullied, as far as we can see, the school took the decision properly some months ago, actually, and this policy had been running for a while. Um, and it's when the school attracted some media attention, um, suddenly a great deal of pressure was brought to bear on it, not in the immediate school community, but much, from but a much got, But you put wider. inspectors in yesterday, and I we wonder did. if, if w the possible outcome of that could be something that's antithetical to a lot of Muslims who say, we would rather we had this policy. And I wonder if there's a danger, 
a danger that in sometimes you conflate what might be seen as conservatism with extremism? No, on the contrary. There, um, there, there are some very different issues, and, and we haven't got time to unpack them all, all here today. Um, but it's, it is so important that schools can take their response. Schools have a responsibility to promote mm. cohesion the, in, in a very diverse world. They can never give every parent exactly what they want, but they have to be able to take sensible decisions for the benefit of all children. And what I'm concerned about is when I see schools losing the authority and space to take the right decisions. Moving on to a more general point yes. now, because we actually have a new education secretary for the last two weeks. And um, I wonder if you would like to see that education secretary press ahead with a kind of revived grammar school program, given that it was in the Conservative manifesto? Um, that is indeed something that was in the Conservative manifesto. It's not something that I have taken a policy position on. My job is to inspect schools. Do you think, um, and the, to see you the, think the, the, the addition of more grammar schools would be valuable? That's not something I've expressed an opinion on before, and I'm not going to express one now. Thank you very much, Amanda Spielman. Well, let's discuss this further. With me in the studio is Gita Sagal, who is the founder of the Centre for Secular Space, which campaigns for secular voices in public life. And down the line from Birmingham is Sajid Gulzar. He is Chief Executive and Executive Head of the Prince Albert Community Trust, which runs three schools in the city. Uh, good evening uh, to both of you. Um, Sajid Gulzar, I wonder, first of all, if I can ask you, um, what message do you think uh, Amanda Spielman is giving out by backing Newham? Um, well, firstly, I think any school um, needs to be free to set its own uniform policy um, and there is no requirement for uh, Muslim girls uh, of, of the age of eight or below to, to wear the hijab. But equally, um, I'm not sure how the banning of the hijab um, fits in with the British value of, of mutual respect and tolerance for, for all faiths. So in your school, would girls of any age, for example, be uh, allowed to wear the hijab? Would anyone that wants to wear something of a religious nature, uh, you know, I, I, I don't mean, I mean a cross or whatever, be allowed to wear it? Well, absolutely. Within reason, we, we have many uh, Muslim girls who wear the hijab. Uh, we have many who don't. Um, in, in, in my almost 20 years uh, in education, I, I've not come across any community tensions between those who do and those who don't. In fact, we have families uh, where you may have two sisters who send their children to the school, one wearing hijab, one not. It, it's never really, really been a problem. Uh, just coming on um, to talk to you, uh, Gita, do you think that, you know, as we just heard there, uh, uh, mutual tolerance, allowing people to wear what they wish, when they wish, is a good thing in British society? I think we're confusing the issue of growing fundamentalism with tolerance. And this, this morning, Amanda Spielman, when she gave her speech, and it was in front of a Church of England audience, in very carefully considered words, uh, did suggest that faith schools A, are not talking to each other, necessarily, that the church is not sufficiently f uh, challenging fundamentalists among their midst, and regretted that the church was hindering the registration of uh, the inspection of unregistered schools. Um, so this problem is wider than that of Muslims. Therefore, when we look at the issue of tolerance, we can't narrow it to the issue of the hijab. I think that the promotion of the hijab, and we have to be very, very clear, this hasn't just happened because of individual choices. There has been a distinct policy led by the Muslim Council of Britain to promote the hijab in mainstream schools. But, 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 but. And many schools have adopted it as a policy when it has been completely unrecognized in traditional Muslim cultures, but would you ex worn by very young girls. But, but are, are you talking about coercion? Or are you talking about freedom to choose? Because uh, you would hear from Birmingham that there is a freedom to choose, and often within families, girls dress differently. Yes, there may be a difference in families, but what we're seeing in the promotion of very young children, not only wearing hijab, girls wearing hijab, but the promotion of fasting. St. Stephen's School was under fire, the school in, in Newham, which banned the hijab, had also banned fasting. Children were fainting in school. Sometimes staff were fainting away in so, school. Well, let's, let, let, that let's, is a health and safety well, let, and let's a pick up. That, that, that is as an assertion you're making, I'm afraid. We have no proof for that, but I, I, it's not that I disbelieve I you. I head it's not of, that I disbelieve of, you. I want to put that to the chair of shout. governors of St. Stephen's School, and this is the claim he made. I don't think he was lying. Right, well, let me just uh, put this to Shahjid. Are there certain claim. things within your school that you say are simply not acceptable? For example, fasting 
would that be acceptable? Or are there other things that you say, look, this is the curriculum, this is the way I run my school, this is what I'm going to do? I, th I think the, the point is, is one of dialogue and, and of working with the community that you serve, regardless of, of what faith background um, or, or cultural persuasion that community is. Um, I mean, we, we take a stance on fasting. We strongly discourage uh, children from fasting uh, when the fast is particularly long, as it has been in recent years. Um, in fact, we, we ask local imams to come in and, and speak to the parents. Uh, and when we have that dialogue, when we have that discussion, uh, there really isn't a problem. I, I mean, I don't know of any uh, promotion of, of hijab that, that Geeta's just mentioned. It, it's certainly outside of my experience um, of, of being a head teacher and responsible for, for several schools in Birmingham. Uh, it's not something that I've, that I've come across in Birmingham. I, I, I know of no promotion of hijab in that respect at all. I but I wonder, just going back... Let me explain if Mr. Gulzar hasn't come across it. The Al-Hijra Trust which, Ofsted, which challenged Ofsted finding gender segregation discriminatory in a school that was supposed to be a mixed sex school and had severe gender discrimination policies and extremist literature on its premises, was uh, a body that actually wrote policy on promoting segregated attitudes for Muslim well, children in well, mainstream schools. Let me just put that to Amanda Spielman, who's still here. It's um, only fair to put it. Let me just put that to Amanda Spielman. What do you say about that? Um, about the, yeah. the, the well, it's it's um, well. Firstly, it's absolutely right, and secondly, um, I'm sorry I didn't catch your name. But what you said, said so you, said you, you you absolutely use your resp your role as a head to decide what is and isn't acceptable, and to set boundaries. You said you strongly discourage fasting, absolutely. and that's exactly right. It is it mm -hmm. is your responsibility as a head yeah, to make to, yeah. to, to make to make those decisions. Do you, do you think the decisions of heads are being um, eroded? Well, that, I think that's precisely what we saw at St Stephen's. We saw a policy which had been in place for some months and accepted, not necessarily liked by every single parent, but was accepted. Mm -hmm. And we saw outside groups come in and put pressure on the school um, to, to reverse the policy, who were not part of the school community, who were very much coming, zooming in from outside. And are you going to be on St Stephen's case? You're not just going to make the speech and leave. You're actually going to follow this through to get a good atmosphere in the school if you think it's lacking? Ofsted is only the inspectorate. All we can do is to report on what we find, and that's why we visited the school, so that we can, we can report. Thank you all very much indeed.